Today I'm working on the old plow. Now, if you're a little bit behind on your tractor time with 10 episodes, you probably are saying, what plow? Even if you know about plows, you say, why do you need that big of a plow? A few of our recent episodes will bring you up to speed pretty quickly. Uh, I bought this old plow off a guy who's an Oliver tractor fan, uh, not too far from here, maybe an hour from here. So those other episodes should help you out. First, we have an episode picking up the plow. Uh, we also have an episode where we talk about the tractor we're going to pull it with. But today I'm working on it. I'm replacing these shins. Now this is called a plow share. In the country we call it a plow point. This is called the moldboard. And this is called a shin. All three of these pieces go together to, to make, you know, overall what might be called the plow moldboard. So why are there three pieces? There are three pieces because they wear at different intervals. If you had it all one big piece, this tip wears out the soonest because this is the, the point of contact with the soil and so this piece has to be replaced quite frequently. The next frequent piece is the shin because it's still pretty close to contact to the, to the soil while it's not moving yet and that soil has to get pushed really hard there so this wears, you can see it's worn right here pretty bad. The most expensive part though is the moldboard and you don't want to replace that very often. So these other two pieces are meant to protect the moldboard. So in this case, the old shin is worn really thin. One interesting thing, I, I don't know, you guys may not care about plows at all, but there are some fascinating things about this. From a steel standpoint, there are three layers to this steel. The top layer is really hard, okay? Really hard, really brittle, it will resist wear. There's a back layer that's like that. It's also hard and, and resistant to wear, but in the middle, is much more mild, softer steel that gives it more strength. So as soon as the first layer wears through, the second layer wears almost immediately because it's much softer. So you'll always see it where you can see once that first layer wears through, you know, you're all the way to the back layer at that point. Kind of nifty. Now the challenge is getting these things off. You, can, you might see down here, you see some pitting. This thing has sat in the dirt, in the mud for who knows how long, it's all pitted and rusted. Well, the backside, the nut on this plow bolt here is equally rusted and there was no way to get it off. I worked and worked at that the other night. I'm using a cutoff wheel on my grinder. On the farm, we would have used a cutting torch. I don't have a cutting torch. One thing I notice, well, it's actually kind of something you're noticing too if you watch our channel. I've always got some new product to show you, something you need, something that I need. Well, that's what's the situation here. I, I need a cutting torch, but I hate to buy one. You know, it just seems like a lot of money. And with the growth that we've experienced in what we're doing, going from our half acre property to now what we're doing with multiple tractors and some old machinery, some new machinery, the, the, the need for tools, the need for parts is, is just overwhelming to, to my finance committee. Maybe that's why she's not out here today. I don't know. Anyway, I need a cutting torch, but I'm gonna use the grinding wheel and you can do that too. This is not the most pleasant job in the world. Underneath the plow now, that right there is the bolt I'm trying to get off. This bolt's in the way, so we can't get a socket on it. Can't even get a box end of a wrench on it. It's right down there. So I'm just gonna take the cutoff wheel and grind about half or two thirds of that nut off and then see if I can get it to come out. Worked on the first one. Now I realize you can't see exactly where I'm gonna be grinding from that angle. But I promise you, you'd rather be at that angle than the angle I've got. I've worked to make sure that the steel cuttings are going to go that way away from me. But if you'll notice, I've still got long sleeves and my gloves here because a sufficient number of those steel cuttings do come back and they're a bit warm. I wish I didn't have to get under there so far to see it, but I at least have to to start. Sometimes then I can put a wrench on what's remaining of the nut and just twist it off, bolt and nut and all. Ah, look at that. So I had ground almost all the way. I'll probably use an impact wrench on this. It's nice to try it once.
Oh, I got this one to start to break loose. Now it'll do okay for just a little bit and then the bolt will break loose and that's where I'll be in a bind. You know, the bolt is even with the plow, just shed on the inside. But since the head is worn, see that's what happens. The bolt then gets to where it turns. But we have a couple answers. So the first solution is get a pair of vice grips and try to grab that bolt head without the nut and hold it in. And I found it works a lot better to use an impact wrench for this because it goes quickly and because it bounces a little. Now one thing you don't want to do is buzz that impact wrench while you have your finger on the head of that bolt. That's a good way to spoil your day. Okay, that got us a little bit. I find that doesn't always get it what we need, so I've got another approach I might try. And that is in this slot here, I can slide a screwdriver around, down in there. And as we loosen this, it'll bind in there. Okay, that wasn't working really well. And then I got to thinking that you can't see very well when I'm grinding the bottom bolt anyway. So how about if I grind this one where you can see it so you can see what's going on when I grind the bottom one. So the first thing you'll notice when I run the grinder, it's running that way. So that's gonna be perfect for us here. It's not gonna throw it up in our face. I tell you what, that 99 cent cutoff wheel has made my day a lot easier. Where's the hammer? So. Now you might ask why I didn't use WD-40 or some sort of, you know, rust penetrant. Well, this is well beyond that. The threads were well deteriorated at this point. I'm glad this is only a three bottom plow. Nine, 10 bottom, no fun. The grinding cutoff wheel worked so well on that one that I'm gonna try again, only I've positioned the camera between me and the grinder to be even a little more aggressive. Okay, that's the top one, the easy one. Now I'll get the bottom one. You might be asking, well, what do farmers do with all these worn out wear parts? Do they just throw them in the trash? What do they do with them? Well, the answer is similar. A steel uh, is worth money. So there's local places that will accept that steel and pay you cash for it. So they save up all of this steel and they eventually they'll haul off a truckload of it. Sometimes, you know, larger pieces like uh, old junk equipment that doesn't work anymore. You know, oftentimes just these worn steel parts from a plow or a field cultivator or maybe worn disc blades, who knows? Um, yeah, that's what they do with them. This one's really rusted. It's hard to even tell it's a a nut and bolt in there, it's just a little knob. Okay, maybe I've got it far enough to beat it off. Or maybe not. Unfortunately, I only got about half of the thickness of the nut ground off, so we'll see, maybe I've got enough. There she comes. You want to get all you can off of there so that it will stay tight once you tighten it back up. So I got two of my replacement shins from the seller of the plow. He threw in the shins when he sold it to me. The third one, I knew that we had some of these plows on the family farm, so I asked Tom if he could find me a shin that would fit. Sure enough, he found this one. Well, he wanted to make sure he pointed out one thing about it. I'll show you really up close to most of you. This is probably not very meaningful, but it says Radex. That's an original Oliver shin manufactured by the Oliver Corporation. The latest it could have been would have been the 70s. So it's quite old, even though it's brand new. Tom had a little trouble parting with that, but we appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. A little bit of a tight fit here. Don't know that we're in yet. No. Nope. 
There we go. Now we want the head of that bolt to go down because we don't want it to wear off prematurely. This is actually a used bolt here, but it was in pretty good shape. Even though this was in good shape, you can see how much indented it is there. So that's how much had worn off of the head of it the previous time it was used. Hopefully we can get this one pulled down pretty good so that the head is snugged in there tightly. Now I'm noticing that this point or share is missing a nut right here. You'd say, why don't you just put a nut on it, Tim? Well, it's because it's left-handed threads. These are left-handed threads because the soil hits them and would spin them off if they were right-handed threads. So I don't have a replacement nut with left-handed threads. I'll have to see if I can find one. Okay, it's been a couple of days since I was working on this project before I ran out of bolts and couldn't find the bolts that the seller sent with me for the other sets of shins. So I had to bump some more from Brother Tom. Thanks, Tom. But we got the new shins on now on the all three bottoms. And I think it's ready to plow. Now I am missing one piece. If, if any of you Oliver fans might know, there's a, a collar that's supposed to go on here that's supposed to keep this from having free rain. It's just like this one here. If you have any idea where I could get one of those, I would love to have one because this cutter will end up just flopping around like this until it, you know, once you put it in the ground, it'll work fine, but it'll look kind of silly just flopping around. Looks like there may have been some weld here that's not, I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not. So I may need a whole new shaft and to start over on that. Anyway, it's still too wet to plow. So I think we'll just park this thing over here in the tall weeds. Now a semi-mounted plow has lots of advantages. But I will say that learning to back one is not easy. Going backwards with it is not one of those advantages. I don't really care where I park it, but I do want to stay in the camera view if I can. And yet I don't want to hit the rear tire with it over here on this side. I'm afraid that's not going to cut it, is it? It's not so hard to back when I'm not trying to get in a particular area. Had a lot of flexibility on that. I'm gonna put these two befores under the plow points themselves, and then I'll use this four by six for the actual uh, leg to hold up this side of the plow. This leg was, was originally mounted differently than this. But hey, nothing wrong with a little baling wire. Okay, I'll let it down a little bit, see how close we are. Now I'm intending to plow in just a few days, so I'm gonna leave this cylinder on here. I won't leave it on all summer or all winter. 
because this will just rust eventually. But for now, I've let the pressure off, so I think it's ready to unhook the hoses and the lift arms. We'll be ready to go. These are actually a little easier to unhook than the quick disconnects on the 1025R. Uh, because you don't have to hold them back with your hands. I just push in and pull as long as there's no pressure on. That worked fine. Now these shouldn't be too hard either because the back end will be flexible. There we go. These stabilizers are different than the 1025R as well. I'll have to show you those up close sometime. Okay, we're unhooked from the plow. I usually store linchpins in the toolbox. I'm kind of surprised this has got the exact same toolbox as 1025R. But it is in a nice location. Now, when we actually get ready to plow, we'll take the loader off. But when I originally hooked this plow on, I wasn't planning to plow right then, so I just left the loader on for that time. Make sure we're good to go here. Got good visibility down to the three-point. Okay, folks, if you are interested in this plow, go to your local Oliver dealer and use coupon code TT. Oh, wait. I think your local Oliver dealer went out of business about 30 years ago. So maybe you can't get a plow like this unless you get one like I did. Now, first thing my dad said when he saw it was that it needed a few cans of paint. And uh, I think he's right. But I kind of hate to paint it in that sense as well because it is original. But maybe we will sometime. Maybe somebody who's an expert in sandblasting and cleaning things like this for paint will uh, step up and want to help me with that type of project. I think it would be kind of fun. Anyway, enough for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out our website, tractortimewithtim.com. We got a lot of cool stuff on there. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.